It is time now to say goodbye to an eyewitness news legend. Sandy Kenyon is used to putting the spotlight on celebrities, but this time we yeah. are putting it mm -hmm. on him. Oh my goodness, our Sandy is hanging up his entertainment <laughs> reporter hat, take a role as a consultant in ABC, but we will not let him go without giving him the tribute he deserves. <laughs> Sandy, your life reads like a movie script, I'm telling you right now. And I sat down recently, I had the privilege of sitting down with you recently to hear all your stories. And what I was amazed is it all started as a young man growing up here in the city. Take a listen. Well, when I was nine years old, I walked out of my building at 165 East 72nd Street on the Upper East Side, and there was a film crew shooting a school bus. And it was the opening of a movie called The World According to Henry Orient, starring Peter Sellers. Now, he wasn't there that day, but there was a whole crew, and the bus pulled in, and the camera dollied in, and I thought, Okay, I want that. <laughs> well, fortunately for us, about 19 years ago, someone here at the station decided we needed to have you part of the team. Tell me about that experience and what did you do? Well, I was on 1010 Wins Radio at the time. I'm Sandy Kenyon, 1010 Wins. Great thing about all news radio is that you learn how to write really, really fast. Yeah. The news director said, go to the Oscars and give me something. Right. Now, years ago, I had developed a friendship with the late Gil Cates, a man who produced more Oscars than any other person. And I just called him up and said, Gil, I need. And he said, Sandy, you got. <laughs> and I hired Such my own. Such a Hollywood line. <laughs> I hired my own crew. We went. And Gil was as good as his word. He introduced me to the host that year, Chris Rock, who gave me a few uh, vital seconds of sound. Backstage at Hollywood's Kodak Theater, Rock is relaxed and still causing controversy. I have a care in the world. We'll go out, smoke some dope, and get ready for the show. <laughs> there you go. He took me on stage to show wow. me the set. Now, as a result of that, uh, you can't do that anymore. <laughs> There was a sort of a decision afterwards that... Uh, the Kenyan rule. <laughs> you can't see the set until the curtain lifts in the early seconds of the Oscar broadcast. But he took me up there and we shot it all, we cut it all together, and I didn't tell anybody what I had. It's much closer than it looks on TV. The biggest fear of every winner? Tripping on these steps. I just said, I'll be there on Friday morning, and I rolled this piece, and I must say, the results were highly satisfactory, and I've been here ever since. Oh my goodness. Now let's talk about some of the celebrities you've met along the way, like Jennifer Garner, right? Jennifer Garner is just the sweetest person, and here's a story that illustrates that perfectly. Now, I have an interview with Jennifer Garner, who had been appearing in Cyrano on stage, and it was before digital. It was the last day of tape and I did the interview with her and she was just terrific then for the first and only time in my career the uh, technician runs in and says we didn't record that oh no and I looked stricken <laughs> and she said don't worry we'll do it again oh. and I thought what a relief but then she said but there's something that's bothering me Sandy your makeup's all wrong. And the next thing I knew, one of the most beautiful women and most famous in the country was just carefully <laughs> doing my makeup. Wow. The star did the makeup. She did it again, she did it better, and she endeared herself to me ever since. I've had Hugh Jackman sing a song to me. Two feet away, three feet away, that is uh, amazing. Not bad. And I have to say, <laughs> Matt Damon oh, Matt has Damon. done really move? a lot for me. One time uh, when Emily Blunt was coming up, they were doing a movie together, and as I was leaving from interviewing Emily with uh, Matt, he turned to her and said, do you know who that guy is? And she goes, frankly, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, well, you should get to know him because his reports in the taxi cab really made a difference for Ben Affleck's first film. So ever since then, when I see Emily Blunt, she greets me like wow. a long lost relative. Elizabeth Taylor. What was the first time you met her? I met Elizabeth Taylor when she was married to John Warner. 
-hmm. and, and in Washington, D.C., and you never got past the eyes with yeah, Elizabeth Taylor. Right? They were infinite shades of violet. I never, ever saw a motion picture or a still picture that did them justice. Yeah. You just had to be there. My favorite <laughs> Elizabeth Taylor was at the Oscars one year when I was locked up right after the telecast had happened, and I was due downstairs for a CNN live shot, and I literally ran down a hallway trying to get out, and there was a freight elevator, and it opened, and uh, I fell right on my behind, mm -hmm. right in front. How graceful of you. And it was not graceful, David. It was not <laughs> graceful. And I looked up, and one of the world's most famous hands extended, <laughs> and the most famous jewel was dangling. <laughs> the diamond. And, uh, the diamond, the Burton diamond, <laughs> biggest right. in the world. And I heard the soft voice saying, Sandy, where the blank <laughs> is the fire? <laughs> Oh, oh nobody can drop a celebrity name <laughs> right? like this guy. Okay. I'm going to tell you. And it's well worth it, the stories. We're going to miss you so much. Oh, I'm going to miss your friendship. You've always encouraged me so much. We sit right next to each other, our dinners. You will always be a special friend. Thank you so much. You are the grand storyteller, but what says so much about you is you could tell a great story about all your coworkers. So that's what type of person oh, you thanks are. Thanks so really much. Really is true. Yes. I want to thank David so much for that heart and soul that you put into that My interview. Privilege. It was My really privilege. a great moment yes. and what I won't forget ever is all the laughs and the stories both on air and behind, <laughs> the, behind scenes. the scenes during the commercial break. I can remember these wonderful tales. It's really great. Of course, we have such a bond, Lee and I, because we're car guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, all of you have been so, so terrific to me. And I'd like to say a few words about that, if Please that's do. okay. Speaking of ties that bind, I want to thank each of you who have given me your time and attention through the years. Since the news I would be leaving came out, so many of you have gotten in touch and that's reminded me how thrilling it's been to be part of a community. The community that's shared by those who watch Eyewitness News and those of us who work here. When I came here 19 years ago, I was told that WABC TV was a legacy station, meaning the tradition of tuning into Channel 7 was passed down from one generation to the next. Many viewers through the years told me they'd grown up watching us and they almost always mentioned their favorite anchors past and present. I am but a very small part of that. But it's this trust you have placed in us that makes working here better than working any place else. Another big reason being here is so cool, the people alongside me every single day, the folks behind the camera, the editors and media managers who work so hard to make me look and sound so good. The desk, the best assignment desk in the entire city. The leaders in the newsroom who guide us, my on-air colleagues who so frequently prompt one question from the public. Are you guys really as good friends as you <laughs> seem on TV? Well, the short answer is yes. Joelle Gargiulo is the perfect person to take over from me because she is in that tradition and she is also a great entertainment reporter who has spent years on the beat. I'm happy to say that in the course of all that, Joelle has also become a good friend. I came up in a rough and tumble time in this business. Some days were downright nasty. So I appreciate the consideration and, yes, the kindness I've received in our newsroom. I got a second chance here, a second act to a career that I had severely compromised by my own actions. The best part is that I found redemption thanks to you and all the people who have worked so hard alongside me. I thank them and I thank you. Let me tell you, it's so beautiful.
Better Life, as I said before, is a movie script. You had your ups, you had your downs, you had your ups, and then we had the privilege of spending some of it with you. What a wonderful experience it has been, right? Wisdom to the last drop. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. And stories to continue. So I know you're consulting for ABC, but yeah. I yeah. think there's a book in you, oh, right. or maybe a script, as David mentioned, <laughs> and we look forward to that. More importantly, right. I have your number, so we'll be talking <laughs> right. about movies forever, okay? And thank you, thank like you. you've done for all of us personally. My son sure. is in the movie business. You helped him get his first internship. There's so many stories about the real man behind the one you see in the screen that we can't even have time to tell, but thank just you, that David. you know that you're loved. Thanks so much. In fact, I'll miss you in the cabs, for Thanks. sure. Sandy, <laughs> we want to say goodbye. We want to leave our audience with one last image of you on the job. Your final report at the Oscars as you walk off into the sunset up the steps of the Dolby Theater. Sandy, thank you and good luck with the next chapter in your story.